fallout, smoke, women crying for their sons because their sons are not, Romans killing riotous groups that are rising up, free Judea, free our people, autonomy for Israel. You had Herod, an Edomite, and his dynasty, Herod's ruling, killing any potential threat, any potential Messiah. Then you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we learned from Josephus are not Jews by birth. No. What's up, BZ Dynasty? This is your boy, the man, the myth, and the legend, Mr. J.B. Zion. All praise be to the most high, Yerubah, and Ephraim of the tribe of Joseph, of the seed of Jacob, i.e. your favorite dreaded Israelite, coming again with another bang, all praises. So y'all, welcome back to Zion Dynasty. Welcome back to the channel. First, I want to say shalom to all my Israelite brothers and sisters with the love of the Most High, and shalom to all my Gentile viewers. Peace, blessings, and prosperity to all of you. I love you all with the love of the Most High. So today, you guys, as you guys already know, um, we are introducing our Black Power series, right? We're going to go into the ideologies of the Black Power groups. We're going to talk about Moors. Is there a connection? We're going to talk about the Negro, the word Negro itself. And I'm going to do a book review on the Negro question. I'm going to show you guys. Where did I put that book? Yes, I'm going to do a book review on the Negro question. Shout out to from our subscriber and put that comment on the screen that asked for us to do that review you guys i'm gonna talk a little bit i love the book you guys i read it cover to cover and i'm gonna talk about the word negro right i'm gonna look at it being spanish portuguese in origin and how it does bear a secret to our our history as you guys have seen in the other videos about the al andalus our iberian spain connection of african americans the moorish impact right and how the word Negro, because a lot of people say it's the same as just saying you're black. It's, it, there is a history to it, just like the word more. So we're going to cover all that in the Black History series, you guys, the Black Power Group. Uh, I'm going to do a video on the history of the Black Power Groups. So I'm going to talk about Frank S. Cherry. I'm going to talk about Marcus Garvey. All of that stuff. We're going to talk about uh, the Nation of Islam, Elijah Muhammad, Fareed Muhammad. And then at the end of that series, we're going to say, was there something in common that all of these groups had? in terms of the statement they made with regard to our ethnicity. So, you guys, this is kind of like an intro to the Black History Month, Black Series, Black Power Groups, all of that. Well, we're gonna just be talking about what is Black History Month and is Black History Month relevant, right? I know in 2022, this is a big question because a lot of people are second guessing the concept. You have a lot of different states that are banning critical race theory. They're trying to do away with the narrative that um, race affects us today, right? A lot of people, a lot of people don't feel the way I kind of feel that to overcome something you need to deal with it. Some people feel like that us focusing on the negativity of this country's history of racism, that all it really does is continue it. It, it continues this harboring of just bad emotions and hatred towards one another. When if we want to get past that, we not we don't we need to turn a chapter on that, right? I have the completely opposite <laughs> viewpoint. I believe that there is a lot of history that our people have, right? And I'm gonna put some of these pictures on the screen and let you guys kind of look at the contribution that our people have made that I have not heard about, right? I went to a magnet school my whole life, went off to college. If y'all hear my baby screaming in the background, please bear with me, right? Them kids got the drive of anxious, right? All praise to the most high. Um, but yeah, it's. And you guys, I just had one of the most excellent bills with one of my brothers. I might have him on the channel. Uh, that's my baby girl screaming, y'all. Um, Christian brother, he's like my bro. I'm not even Christian, bro. I ain't even had to put that in. But my bro back from school, I didn't know his brother like since I was like 11 in junior high. Uh, amazing brother. I love that brother with all my heart, man. I was glad to be, I was just so happy to be able to reach back out to him and just talk. And we chop it up. And it enlightened me. It showed me about us as Israelites, we need to step our game up. I'm just gonna stay it like that. There are a lot of of um, our black Christians and bro brothers and sisters that hear what we're saying, but there's a lot of flaws to it. Like Christianity and its origin in terms of being a white man's religion. And I know I've said that you guys and a lot of other brothers say that, but there's a lot of clarification that has to go into that. <laughs> a lot of stuff. But I just enjoyed the bill guys. And I love that our people, and I'm the kind of person like I'm open-minded into 
talking to any group of any person and whatever their beliefs are and us especially my people especially black people um that's not to dismiss gentile brothers and sisters y'all understand my heart but our people are in a restoration uh season where a lot of this history is coming out our people are trying to uh come up in terms of business and education and knowledge and identity and history and with that uh, i just always pride myself in having opportunities to chop it up with my black especially my black christians because i believe that we can come to a consensus that he being a hebrew israelite is not a cult or it's not a religious affirmation and ethnicity is a cult being a hebrew israelite is an identity based on ethnicity based on history right we're making a claim about our lineage now there's a lot of hebrews and brews that i rock with i got brews like it's so many, I ain't gonna name everybody on the channel. It's something that, that's on part of the channel, but I ain't gonna put them out there like that. But it's brews I know that's purely New Testament. That believe in Christ's sacrifice for our people, or Christ's sacrifice for the church and the believers. But know that ethnically speaking, they're Israelites. Whereas you have um, brews that are Old Testament only, and I can understand where they're coming from, and I can chop it up with them. Then you have brews that I heard were Muslim. You have brews that are atheists, right? because we're making an ethnicity claim, not a set of religious beliefs. So it's, it's, it's diverse, man, it's iconic, it's diverse. But, um, so that's why we're gonna do this video. We're gonna be talking about, because when you delve into us being Israel, the glaring question is, does race matter, right? And now we are, I'll check out that video, does color matter, that I've already done earlier, all right? And I might do another one, because you always gotta kinda reinforce that kind of stuff. But does color matter? Does Christ's color matter? Does ethnicity matter in 2022? Because when you look at Black History Month, it seems like it, it just harbors division. Or some people, I can see why they see it that way. That all we're really doing is just focusing on what divides us along racial and ethnic boundaries versus what unifies us, right? But I argue that for a people to truly be engrafted into society, they must be wholly present. And when I say wholly present, I mean WH. Oh, whole. They must be made whole, right? There's a lot of aspects of our community that has not been made whole in terms of history, right? And that's why Israelites have the contention that we have because I'm fine with everybody being equal. But if we are truly going to be equal and we happen to be descended from Israel, if there is even a 1% chance of that, now we know how much history it is, but I'm speaking from a purely objective standpoint. If there's a 1% chance that black people are Israel, that means that needs to be wholly invested into, right? Because that goes into the restoration of a people. Now, as you guys see on these different pictures I'm about to put up, our people have made so many contributions and not just the typical ones you hear about, um, Martin Luther King and uh, Malcolm X and Rosa Parks and, and the stuff that you hear all the time. Every year you hear about the same people, right? You might hear about Thurgood Marshall or Jesse Owens or Jackie Robinson and this kind of thing. But there's so many inventors and scholars and Dr. Vivian Thomas and Oprah Hart, surgeons and, and just even Ben Carson, right? With the separation of the conjoined twins and, and a lot of this stuff you guys are familiar with, I'm just using these as examples, that our people need that to be highlighted. Representation matters, especially in a society where there are, sad to say, so many negative stereotypical views of our community, right? So in 2022, we need Black History Month. Now, I have to say that because there are some states that are moving away from this stuff, y'all. I don't know if y'all been keeping up, but there are certain states that are trying to dismiss talking about race in 1619 and slavery out of the curriculum, right? Just trying to dismiss it out of the entire history curriculum. And we have to fight for our place, right? Because what we don't want to happen is to black people get caught up in a negative stereotype and we start removing the positive, right? They already want to pull Cosby show because of the accusations. They already want to do this and do that, but we have to rep we have to replace that. You can't uproot a negative culture without planting a positive one in its stead. And to all my Gentile brothers and sisters, it's all right if you say who we're not, but beware that you say who we are, right? You, you can't just take away something, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. Right? You have to feel that with a positive influence, a positive sense of self-identity. And, and with as much history as we have, you're not just going to be able to tell people that, okay, you're just, you're, you're God's, God's child. You're a Christian, right? 
because as you see there are Chinese Christians there are Indian Christians right that still have a culture and a heritage and a family lineage that they can be proud of and they're Christian so we're asking who are we as a people a people that have had their records burned on multiple occasions a people that have been degraded right and have been told they're nothing have been had all these negative stereotypes go against them who are we as a people so that's why I feel like Black History Month that's why I'm gonna go hard into this series y'all defining the word Negro right defining black I might do a video follow-up but I might just had it in a Negro video about now black is a color right it's no longer applicable to the to the, <laughs> the year 2022 y'all I'm black what's your ethnicity I'm black so now y'all see this shirt I got on right that's black oh, I'm just gonna keep it straight there's so much science coming out African ancestry true ancestry Jed match 23 me, where we as a community need to move from these byword terms now I know I think Jesse Jackson coined the term you know the whole phrase I'm black and I'm proud and that kind of thing before James Brown I think said it to build esteem to a people and to let white people that were calling us black know that well, I am a man, right? And I matter. Black lives matter, that kind of sentiment. But what we did was we cut ourselves off from a constructive root, a constructive identity. Because there is no country called black. Right? That's not our ethnicity. Our skin is not even black. Y'all can see the contrast, right? I know they can be like, that's your Ephraimite blood. You know, that's why you, but my skin is not the color of my beard. And I don't think there's any Israelite whose skin is the color of their beard. Jet black, right? So we have to begin to delve into scholarship and science and research and history and going into what tribes that we come from as a people, right? So I think Black History Month has not evolved. If anything, it should elevate in terms of a lot of history that we know now about these black inventors and black identity and, and, and West African Jews and the ancient Egyptians. A lot of that archaic history needs to be included in Black History Month. Like if there were Sephardic Israelites that were banished from Spain in 1492 that went into North Africa, that became the Afriot family of the Moroccans, that migrated into the Soyudan and Lam Lam and Negro Land and the Gold Coast and the Wheat Coast and Slave Coast, that history needs to be a part, not just the 1619 narrative. We need to delve deeper and have a more genuine conversation on what is black. The Negro question, and that's what we're gonna be dealing with in the next video, we're gonna deal with this, right? Who are we as a people? Because black, don't call me black no more, right? That's a byword and a proverb. So Black History Month, you guys, I'm just setting it up, letting you guys know that it matters. Now, a lot of you are next gonna say, why does this matter from a God perspective? Like when you look at the scriptures, the Most High, Yeshua himself, the Most High in human flesh through an Israelite lineage, said that I have come for the lost sheep. Now, we know he was talking about Israel and going to his people to restore us as a nation. But let's just deal with a lost people, right? Christ's mission, if anything else that you can glean from, Christ came for the destitute, the downtrodden, the oppressed, the brokenhearted. His mission was to take the least of these and restore esteem to these people, right? Christ said it himself. He said that he would leave the 99 for the one lost sheep. He rejoiced at the prodigal son, even when he had a son in the house, right? This is the heart of the father that we serve, the Judean mighty one of Yaakobi, the holy one of Yasharal, the holy one of Israel. This is his heart. So if we say we believe in this God, then from a biblical standpoint, if we see a segment of humanity, right, that lies hanging the balance, right? that are almost an endangered species, that suffer a cruel, vicious cycle of police brutality. And we believe in the God of the scriptures. We should, if anything, make that people the priority. Paul said it like this in a mystery. He said, the member that's least esteemed should be given the most honor. And if our people have had our history stripped, our language and identity destroyed, the number one consensus, the number one uh, course of action should be directed towards these Israelite descendants, these, these so-called Crayola color black, our two continents slapped together African-American, right? So that's why Black History Month matters, and that's why we're gonna go deeper into this subject, y'all, and we're gonna deal with the Negro question, we're gonna deal with the Moorish question, 
We're gonna deal with the comedic question. We're gonna deal with Al Andalus. We're gonna deal some more with the Yoruba, the Benai Ephraim, the Igbo, the tribe of God. We're gonna deal, right, with all of these different terms and we're gonna get to who are we and we're gonna look at our different black leaders um, and see what input did they put into the struggle and the liberation of our people. Because in the salvation of the black man is the liberation for all nations and the world itself. So with that, y'all, peace, love, and black power to the chosen race of the Most High, y'all. We the people, y'all. And I'm excited. We getting ready to go into that black power series. Let's get it. Shalom. All praises.